Hello friends, hello friends, you welcome back. We're talking about the law of demand and trying to explain the reason for the law of demand with the income effect, substitution effect and diminishing marginal utility. So let's look at the income effect. At lower price, consumers can buy more of a product without giving up other goods. How can this be? How can this be? A decline in price increases purchasing power. The purchasing power or real income. Now, a purchasing power or real income is the quantity of a commodity your money can buy. So, let me give an, an example for you to get the understanding easily. Assuming you have 10 Ghana CDs on you, you want to buy books. One book is 2 Ghana CDs. One book is 2 Ghana CDs. You can buy 5 of these books. Assuming the price of the book increases from 2 Ghana CDs, to five Ghana CDs. In this case, you still have your 10 CDs on you, but you can buy only two. What has happened? Your purchasing power or your real income has decreased from five to two, and it has affected your demand. Though you would have loved to buy more, but the money you have can now buy only two. So your demand decreases as price increases. That is the income effect. Then there's a substitution effect. At a lower price, consumers have the incentive to substitute the cheaper good for similar goods that are now relatively more expensive. Let me give an example. Um, in Ghana, we have milk. We have pig milk and we have ideal milk. We have other types of milk, but let me just use these two as an example. Assuming the prices of these are the same and you are a consumer of ideal milk, if the price of um, ideal milk increases it has become expensive to you now so you are likely to stop consuming ideal milk and shift to consume pig milk so what has happened you have reduced your demand for ideal milk because you see the substitute of ideal milk which is pig milk less expensive that is substitution effect it is precipitated by a change in the price of the commodity in question. Great. And the last one is diminishing marginal utility effect. It states that successive units of a given product yields less and less extra satisfaction. Yes. And every consumer is assumed to be rational. Now, if you consume any commodity, you are willing to um, pay a very high price for a commodity that gives you a very high satisfaction and pay a low price for a commodity that gives you a lower satisfaction now for every commodity you consume assuming you are very 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 thirsty extremely thirsty and you are given a sachet of water the first sachet of water will give you a very high satisfaction but if you are given some more sachet of water um, what happens is the second Sachet of water will give you some satisfaction, but it will be lower than the first. The third will give you some satisfaction, but it will, it will be lower than the first and the second. So, diminishing marginal utility basically explains that the more and more you consume a commodity, your satisfaction reduces. Now, how does it determine or how does it explain the law of demand? At a, at a, at a higher price, when you consume the first commodity, the price was very high. You were ready to pay a very high price for the first commodity you consumed. All because it gave you a very high satisfaction. Now, subsequent commodities you consume, you are not ready to pay a very high price for them. All because they give you lower satisfaction. So, as your demand increased, the price reduced and vice versa. That is diminishing marginal utility effect. So, therefore, consumers will only buy more of a good if it's its price is reduced okay so here we will talk about the individual demand schedule a demand schedule is basically a table a table so an individual demand schedule is a list of quantities of a commodity purchased by an individual consumer at different prices in other words it is a table representing quantity demanded of a commodity at various prices the table depicts the negative relationship between the two different quantities, um, between the different quantity demanded, 
quantities demanded by the consumer at various prices. So let's look. This is a typical example of a demand schedule. So you can see um, the price of apples and quantity demanded of apples. If the price of apples is 100, quantity demanded is 20. If the price of apples is um, apple is 80, quantity demanded is 40. If the price of apple is 60, quantity demanded is 60. What do you observe here? Can you observe something yourself? Um, what I observe is as the price of apple decreases, for instance, from 100 to 80, I see the quantity demanded of apple increasing from 20 to 40. And if the price of apple decreases, um, increases, let's say from 20 to 40, I see the quantity of apple decreasing. So that is a demand schedule. The next thing to talk about is a demand curve, but I'll pause here and continue in the next video. Stand by for the next video. Thank you. Bye.